guys. Welcome back to the Vibe Within podcast. I'm your host, Gab Cohen, and today is a solo episode. Um, As you know, I took a little break from the podcast just because life has been really fucking crazy, and I feel like I have extracted a lot of useful life information in the last few weeks. Um, First, I wanted to share just a quote that I'm sure many of you have heard. It's by Ram Das, and this quote says, if you want to be enlightened, go spend a week with your family. And indeed, that's what I did a couple weeks ago. I spent an entire week with my family up in New Jersey, not in the best circumstances, um, because we had an unexpected death in the family. My, my aunt tragically and unexpectedly died. Um, It was a very out-of-nowhere health thing, and um, it just really showed me and opened my eyes to how precious and bittersweet life is. I mean, none of us saw this coming. She was one of the more healthier people in our family, Um, and it just caught us all off guard. And then we kind of had to come together as a family, as a unit, you know, like, even though there's been people in our family who have been estranged and haven't talked or haven't seen each other in years, um, we all kind of went up to New Jersey and stayed with my uncle, um, and we all needed to be there for him. So, you know, The last few weeks have been just a whirlwind. It feels like my life has been flipped upside down, and I wanted to share what's been helping me get through the chaos, the discomfort, the uncertainty, because um, we're all kind of in this same energy, no matter what's going on in your life, whether you don't know where you're going to live, or you just lost a friend or a family member or a loved one, or you don't know where you're going to be working or there's just so much stuff that's in the air right now there's so many changes and transitions that are happening in all of our lives and um so a little bit of context um i left miami at the end of march because i couldn't find an apartment and i just I, i realized look i can't rush that process because there is a a housing crisis in Miami and and like every major city in the United States there is a housing crisis everything is getting super expensive landlords and buildings are increasing rent by 500 600 700 dollars I mean the stories that I'm reading on reddit are crazy I follow this um this subreddit called poverty I don't know what it's called, something poverty, and then there, there's a couple of finance ones that I follow as well, and it's just like a bunch of people in their 20s and 30s, you know, talking about their struggles and having to live with parents or having to, you know, find an apartment and how, how, how hard it is, how impossible it is right now. Um, it feels like in order to find an apartment, you have to, like, win the lottery. Even if you have the money, um, actually finding an apartment and getting approved and um, getting in line, you basically have to get in line, and um, it's like everybody's waiting in line to get apartments. It's just crazy right now, and there's a lot of people in their 20s and 30s who are either living at home or have to move in with family or something because you can't just pull an apartment out of your fucking ass. You can't just magically snap your fingers and say, well, I have the money, so, you know, I'm just going to get an apartment. Like, it doesn't work like that anymore, especially now coming out of COVID and um, everybody wants to move. Everybody's looking for a house. Everybody's looking for cars. Everybody's looking to travel. Everybody's looking to like restart their life you know and it just feels like everybody is so ready for this change this growth and it's almost like a pressure cooker and everybody feels like they're under pressure because we quote unquote lost two and a half years um, of our lives with COVID and you know having to slow down or having to draw back and 
I definitely feel like I lost a lot of time during COVID. You know, I, I lived at my mom's for a good part of COVID. Um, and now I'm here again because I know when my intuition is speaking to me and yelling at me, I know the difference between what's what's true and what I should be doing and my intuition and anxiety. And it's, sometimes it's hard to decipher the difference you know, what's fear, what's anxiety, and what is actually the proper path to go down, Um, even if sometimes it doesn't feel like that's going to be the easy path. um, Like, living at my mom's isn't easy, you know? It's it's sometimes a very triggering environment, Um, and I've done a lot of healing and a lot of work to be able to live in this environment with more ease, with more grace, um, and trying to surrender, and that, that was, like, the first part of, of COVID for me, because I was living here, you know, we were very isolated, I don't really have any friends in this, in this town, except for maybe, like, one friend, and she's, she's got kids, and she's always busy, so it's, you know, it's just me, myself, and I over here, um, and my cats and I try to stay busy and I try to use ritual and all these things to get through the day but there is a lot of stuff that I had to unpack in therapy um, the first round of me living here. This is the third round of me living here because I took some breaks during COVID. Um, I lived in California for like six or seven months then I lived in Miami um, again and you know I thought this was gonna be the last time that I moved back to Miami I thought this was it you know I'm gonna make my life it's everything's happening and um, I think everything happens for a reason because and there's no coincidences in life Um, so me and my mom moved all my shit here March 30th right And the next day, we find out that my aunt dies, you know. I wasn't even here for 24 hours. And it just struck me, and I was just like, wow, like, there there is some divine plan going on that I am just not aware of. And so I started thinking more and more about how weird it was that we, you know, we, we find out that my aunt dies the day after I move here. It's almost like me and my mom needed to be together. And it's almost like the universe was coordinating this so that I was here. I was here for my mom. My mom was here for me because we had a really, really strong connection to my Aunt Donna. Um, my Aunt Donna knew everything that I was going through with trying to find an apartment, with, you know, just life. Um, she was like a mother figure to me. She texted me all the time. Um, I really, really looked up to her, and she was also there for me um, during the the thick of my eating disorder in high school. You know, I would stay at my Aunt Donna's house, um, and she would set up, you know, the, the extra room, and she would always make sure that I had food that I would eat and enjoy, and just losing someone, she was so young, um, and it's just so abrupt and so unexpected, it's just, um, it really, really affected our family, because this is the first um, tragic death that our family has gone through, Um, and there's other people in our family who have health issues, you know, there's people who have had strokes, there's my grandmother, um, bless her heart, she's gone through a lot. She has blood cancer, she's going through treatments, and she's, you know, trucking, trucking along. Um, it's just so crazy when somebody young dies out of nowhere, you know. There's no, where, there's no way to prepare for those things, and it just really shook me and kind of freaked me out because it's like I felt this really strong connection to the universe or spirit or whatever higher power right now I'm not really sure if I believe in God and that's just um, it's kind of where I stand right now because 
I've, I've had a lot of loss in my life. I've lost friends at very young ages um, to tragic accidents that are just beyond explaining right now. Um, and so when my Aunt Donna died and I started thinking about, well, that's not fair. You know, my uncle now has to live his life without her and they didn't have kids. They had, they had tons of pets, but now they're all dead. And it just isn't fair. And it just made me kind of think, well, if this is God's plan, I'm not really excited for what's to come. <laughs> um, uh, and I know that that's a very, very bleak and dark way of thinking, but I had to really just be honest with myself. And I was like, well, if this is the plan, and if this is God's plan all along, what should I be, you know, scared of in the future? I mean, I just don't see anything good happening, you know? Uh, and it really took me a lot to get out of that headspace, and I'm still working to get out of that headspace. Um, but we did what we had to do, and we, me and my mom flew up to New Jersey, and uh, it was bittersweet because it was the first time that me, my mom, and my sister have spent time together, just us, without my mom's husband in the picture. And, um, you know, my family isn't the biggest fan of my mom's husband. I'll just put it that way. And me and my sister aren't either. My mom is a, in a very codependent um, relationship with, with her husband. And... Um, he's not the most positive person to be around. He's a Trump supporting Fox News watching uh, person and that's not somebody that I really want to be around at all. Um, toxic masculinity, that's pretty much the vibe of, of him. And being around their dynamic has definitely exacerbated a lot of my anger and discomfort and triggers because my mom does anything and everything to make him happy, you know, cooks, cleans, does everything, and he'll sit on his ass on the couch and watch Fox News. And, you know, maybe it's because they come from a different age, they're boomers, and I know I've talked about this before on my podcast, so I'm not going to get too too deep into it, but... um. I've done a lot of work to just be able to live in this environment without my blood boiling at every given moment of the day. So going up to New Jersey with my mom was the first time since I was about 11 or 12 years old that me and my sister and my mom have spent time together, just us, you know? And it wasn't the best circumstances for that to be happening, but me and my sister definitely looked at it as a blessing in disguise because if it wasn't for this tragedy occurring, um, we wouldn't have been able to rekindle our mother, daughter, and sister relationship. I mean, it's been several years. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of the last time that me and my mom and my sister have been together um, before that, and it was probably when I was like 18 years old. So <laughs> this is, you're talking uh, over a decade ago, and that's not right. You know, that's not okay, and I think that just shows us how codependent my mom has been and how lost in her marriage that she's been and brainwashed and um, just her her priorities have shifted, and I think that this death in the family and being up north and being with our family for an entire week, it really opened our eyes and it was really interesting to see my mom, you know, we basically lived with my uncle for a week um, and living in the energy of grief and mourning and sadness. Um, it is something I've never experienced like that before. Um, yeah, I mean, I've lost grandparents, I've lost friends, but we were living in my aunt and uncle's house for a week in the grief, just right there in it. And uh, that's what he needed. He needed us there. He couldn't be alone. Um, and my uncle is like 
a dad to me. You know, he's he's more of a dad than my stepdad is to me. I, I have pretty much no relationship with my stepdad, and that's fine because I never felt a connection to him. My uncle is like a dad to me. You know, he, him and I have just, have always had a really strong connection. So I felt like it was my duty to to serve and and protect and you know my my uncle is a retired cop too so he um he's been in that service you know he's he's served for many years and uh it was just really interesting to see our family come together and like this like the strong family we are you know we're we're fully italian family we're 100 percent italian um and we all came together, all the aunts, all the cousins, all the nieces and nephews, and, um, you know, seeing my mom interact with her brothers and sisters um, and her mom, like my grandmother, she's not doing well, she's kind of sick, so it was just really kind of fucking just fucked up, bittersweet, and I think the timing um, was interesting, and you know, my Aunt Donna would have wanted us to all come together. She even used to say, like, you know, it's been years since the whole family's been together. Um, it was a very sad week, and I don't want to be a Debbie Downer here. I just want to talk about some things that might help you guys if you're going through death, if you're going through uh, even just like a, ch a transition period. That's also death energy, you know, if you're if you are changing your your behaviors changing the way that you act the way that you think the way that you that you that you treat yourself the way that you eat the way that you move those are all little deaths because you're killing off the parts of you that are holding you back um what i've realized the last few weeks is that um life is it's everything all at once. It is sad, it's happy, it's terrifying, it's exciting, it's beautiful, it's ugly, it's um, it's just everything all at once. And I was listening to a podcast episode on the um, We Can Do Hard Things podcast with Glennon Doyle, and she was interviewing Susan Cain, who is the author of Bittersweet. And they were talking about how even in the, in the happy moments, you can feel this this wave of dread wash over you. And uh, that has been how I've been feeling recently. Every time I, you know, am hanging out with my mom, this, this like lightning bolt of fear, of dread of my mom dying, you know, hits me like, like a brick wall. And then I'm like, wow, I can't even enjoy the good moments because then my brain goes to well oh my god she's gonna die you know like this existential dread um that I it's starting to settle in now that I've been around grief and death um like that and visiting up north also like visiting my grandmother and spending time with my grandmother knowing that you know she's not gonna be here forever she's you know she's not going to be here for much longer and i hate to say that um but it would be awesome if she was here for for 10 more years i mean her sister lived until she was like in her late 90s so we're all hoping that my grandma just you know she pulls through she she um gets through this cancer stuff and it's just hard. It was hard. It was so hard watching my grandmother at the funeral of my aunt because my aunt was, um, my aunt Donna was my grandmother's daughter-in-law. So now my grandmother is having to be there for my uncle. And it's just, you'd never think that you'd have to see your grandmother at a funeral like that um and and be there for your grandmother in, in in those times is just very strange so it was um my family's never been through anything quite like this and i think 
sometimes death is an awakening, you know, as cliche as that sounds, death is the doorway to awakening and reunion and reconnection. Um, unfortunately, you know, um, death can be the the opening and the doorway to healing family wounds and healing relationships. I know that it was opened the door and the pathway to me and my sister and my mom healing our relationship. Um, again, bittersweet. And uh, the the quote that I said in the beginning, if you want to be enlightened, go spend a week with your family. I mean, it's spot on because I was faced with triggers in all directions at every moment of the day, you know, stuff with my disordered eating and being around family as I'm navigating healing my autoimmune issues and not being able to eat certain things and of course family members make comments um, about stuff like that, you know, Um, and I just had to learn how to not take anything seriously or take everything that people were saying with a grain of salt. just being around family in general can be triggering. So being around family during such an intense time of grief um, just adds that extreme layer of of triggers, you know. Um, the mother wound is something that I do talk about a lot on this podcast. I'm sure you can just Google or type in your search um, browser like vibe within mother wound because there are a few episodes where I do talk about the mother wound and I get deeper into that Um, but death is you know I don't know like how else to to describe it but how it can it can reunite people together um in a fucked up way, you know? Um, We did what we had to do. We flew up there, we stayed with my uncle for a week, and we, it honestly felt like an emotional boot camp, you know? It felt like I was, I was in a fucking emotional boot camp training for a week, and I, I noticed how important ritual was, so I do want to talk about what got me through that week with my family. Um, Very, very simple daily habits and rituals kept me sane, so making my morning matcha, you know, doing it with intention, um, listening to podcasts on the porch where my aunt, you know, used to hang out, and you know, taking moments through the day and saying, hey guys, I'm going to go out to the porch, I'm going to make a call, or I'm going to go to a support group, Um, and that being fine, taking an hour away or taking 15, 20 minutes away is fine to breathe, to center, to turn within, to step away from the energy that is triggering you or... um, affecting your body on a on a physical level when you're triggered it can raise cortisol it can raise your blood sugar even if you haven't eaten anything Um, it can spike your insulin and these are all things that you can feel um, within your body so if if taking a break is what you need to reset your energy definitely do it this podcast is sponsored by better help You guys already know how obsessed I am with therapy. I talk about it all the time on this podcast about how I have two therapists and how I go to therapy every single week. Well, I've been going to therapy for years, but once 2020 hit, the year of chaos for all of us, I really needed extra support and BetterHelp has really been there to guide me through these chaotic times. Uh, I've been dealing with anxiety, depression, and I also have been in 
this recovery space for disordered eating and just a host of other issues. So BetterHelp will assess your needs and, uh, and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours, so all you have to do is you take a, a quick online quiz, you answer some questions about what you're going through, what kind of therapist you're looking for, and you can literally write in the answers, I am looking for this kind of therapist, I am looking for an expert in this field. That's what I did, and they matched me with a therapist who has tons of experience with eating disorders, trauma, and depression and to be honest I love my therapist so much she's probably my favorite therapist I've ever had and I've been through like a variety of therapists over the years me and her really hit it off and even if you don't hit it off with your therapist right away because let's be real finding a therapist can honestly feel like you're dating don't worry, you can always change therapists as many times as you need. No questions asked, no charge or anything like that. So you can always change your therapist and then get matched with a new one that day. So BetterHelp uh, is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is literally professional counseling done securely online. And what I love about BetterHelp is that they have a journal feature. So if you're going through something challenging through the week and you don't have an appointment until, let's say, next week, you can write a journal entry. It's all online. It's secure. And if you'd like, you can share that journal entry with your therapist so that they are on the same page. They're caught up. They know exactly what you're going through. They know whatever triggers you've been dealing with over the week. Week. And what's awesome about BetterHelp, too, is that your therapist will respond. So you can actually communicate with your therapist in between your, your sessions. So it's not like you only get, get to talk to your therapist once a week. You can check in with them frequently in between your sessions. You can catch them up to date. You can kind of communicate with them every day if you wanted to. And the online journal feature is really nice for folks who are new to journaling or just need that extra support. So communicating with your therapist more frequently could really benefit you if you're going through a rough time. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available if you are struggling right now. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. You can visit betterhelp.com slash vibe. That's better h e l p dot com slash vibe and you can join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. You deserve the support, you deserve the healing, and you are not alone. There are so many people who are struggling with severe anxiety, depression, trauma, all of these things, and you don't need to suffer in silence anymore. So visit betterhelp.com slash vibe for a discount on your first month of online therapy that's better help h e l p dot com slash vibe and that discount code will get you 10 percent off of your first month of online counseling at betterhelp.com slash vibe so yeah rituals definitely helped i also listened to um Duncan Trussell Family Hour podcast with, um, oh, what's his name? Damien Eccles and his wife were on an episode and they talk about ritual. And Damien Eccles, he was on death row. He was in prison for uh, many years. And he said that by the end of his time there, his days were just ritual eight hours or more of ritual and by the time he left he was you know it didn't even feel like he was in jail anymore it felt he, I remember him saying in, in a podcast that I listened to a couple years ago that he was in jail but he felt like he was in some kind of watchtower and he was manipulating his life outside of jail but he was just in jail and he was just manifesting his life 
outside of jail so he was preparing and uh creating that magic through which ritual and um intention and every minute of the day having a structured way of thinking of acting something you're doing something you're feeling um having that goal and that that energy really pouring into what you're doing that takes you away from the anxiety from the pain from the suffering really turning your your focal point and pointing it towards and focusing it towards um, what you're doing whether that is going for a run going for a walk doing yoga just walking around the block is super healing for me Um, you know I tried to go for a walk every day when I was up in New Jersey um, even if it was just for 20 minutes and that really helped me reset my energy heal get the energy moving through my body the blood circulating through my body and I would also um, go for walks when I did my eating disorder recovery support groups because those are via zoom and you can just go for a walk and do them you know Um, you can also like for better help you can go on a walk when you do your therapy session you don't have to be on video you can just make it audio so that's what I've been doing um, for the last few months is that when I have my BetterHelp therapy session, I I don't do video, I do audio so that I can walk around, so that I can kill two birds with one stone, I can get my steps in, I can feel the, the healing energy of being outside, being in the sun, breathing fresh air. Um, sometimes it's really hard for me to just sit down for an hour and be still, you know, it's just not in my nature anymore. Um, I have OCD, I have anxiety, I have depression. Sitting still for an hour just doesn't feel um, good in, in my body and in my mind because I ruminate a lot. So just by walking, even just walking around the block when I'm at my mom's here, walking around the block, answering emails, listening to podcasts, that is therapy for me. Constantly listening to informational podcasts about healing, about autoimmune, about depression, about the mind, Andrew Huberman's podcast, The Huberman Lab, I mean, that podcast is fucking phenomenal, Um, it's just amazing, and I've learned so much about healing, and how, how healing light exposure can be, cold exposure, just you know, I've I've just been deep diving into learning about the body, learning about the mind, learning about how to heal, you know, and that is something also that's been helping is that um, when you're, when you're feeling stuck, like say you're in, you're in a chapter of your life where you just feel like nothing is in your control, you know, similar to how I feel right now. I'm living at my mom's. I have no friends here, no job, no purpose really. Um, uh, I just feel like I'm stuck sometimes. I'm, you know, there's nothing here for me. Well, what can, what can I get out of this? What positivity can I get from this? What can I focus on while I'm here that I can't focus on when I'm in the hustle and bustle in Miami and working and teaching and, you know, so this is something that I've talked about with my therapist time and time again is that. Um, so what can you focus on? You know, what, what is the positives from the shitty circumstances that we might be living in? You know, whatever, whatever the shitty circumstance might be living with someone you don't want to live with, like a roommate or a family member or working at a job that you hate. Ugh, I've worked so many jobs that I fucking hated. And I remember one of them in, in West Hollywood in California um, I was a hostess at this restaurant, this famous restaurant, and the manager just treated me like shit. He talked to me like shit. He treated me like shit. He talked down to me. And I remember the only thing that would get me through a shift there was thinking about how I had yoga the next day or that I was going to go to yoga after my shift or that I wouldn't be working there for much longer. It's temporary. Or I would journal 
I would literally bring my journal there and I would write affirmations. I would write positive affirmations. And that was one of the only things that would get me through the shift. Like, this is temporary. You're going to find an amazing job. You're becoming a yoga teacher. Um, and I remember when the servers would come up to the hostess stand, like bored, you know, didn't have any tables. They'd be like, what are you writing? And I remember one woman, she was into spirituality. And this was years and years ago. And she was like, wow, that's really awesome that you're doing that, you know? That's really cool that you're, that you're writing out those positive affirmations. Thank you for doing that. Um, so that's something that always shifts me back to a, a nice lens of reality. Like, if your lens of reality is dark and negative, can you shift to, okay, what can I focus on right now that's going to enhance my life and optimize my life? daily ritual, daily um, daily habits that are small, like taking a cold shower or filling up my tub with cold water and ice and taking a cold bath, um, organizing my room, getting rid of clutter, cleaning up. You know, when we clean up the physical clutter in our space, we clean up the emotional clutter um, in our minds. Stretching, you know, stretching the physical body yoga yoga means to you unite or yoke the body and the mind so when you're when you're stretching the physical body you are stretching the the mental you know the mental space you're creating space in your mind so that you don't feel so tight and inflamed emotionally you don't feel so anxious and uptight and wound up emotionally that's why i started doing yoga in the first place um I was in a really dark, you know, time in my life and living in LA, poor, couldn't afford food, could barely afford gas, was living out of my car. I mean, it was a dark time in my life and the only thing that kept me sane and looking forward to anything was going to hot yoga and feeling good because I knew that after doing that class, I would feel so good mentally and physically and I just kept doing it and I kept doing it and then when I actually... You know, when I lost my, one of my best friends, Lance, um, in, in college, um, that is what made me leave the fashion industry and made me realize that I want to be a yoga teacher because yoga was the only thing that made me feel connected to this sense of soul, safety, something higher, and I was not getting that in the fashion industry, so... Death has been a huge wake-up call for me in every time it's happened. You know, every time somebody leaves this earth that's been close to me, um, it's shaken up my world to the point where I really do change my mind, my behaviors, my outlook on life. So, <laughs> you know, I would never... I never. I, I wish my aunt Donna was was not, you know, um, gone. I, I I wish she was still here. But she was a very spiritual being, and I and I actually know that she's um, she's with me, and she's gonna she's gonna visit me. I've been talking to her, and I know that she will visit me um, when she's ready. She actually did um, visit me the night before her memorial. Um, when we were in New Jersey and this is you know this is crazy because I'm not fully Claire audience yet I mean I can I can hear some things but usually it's it's an internal mental thing that I that I feel in my in my headspace um, but the night before her funeral me and my mom were sleeping in the in the guest room and I could not sleep I kept tossing and turning and I heard a whisper say, go to sleep. And I turned over to my mom and I was like, what? What did you just say? And I woke her up and she said, nothing. I didn't say anything. I, I'm, I'm asleep. And I swear to you, it was a voice. <laughs> I don't hear things like that. I wouldn't have woken up my mom and said, what did you just say? So I heard my Aunt Donna come through and whisper to me, go to sleep. And um, that was the first time that I've ever 
been clair fully fully clear audience um and heard a spirit talk to me so i know that i'm open for it i know that i'm i'm receptible to it i just have to keep clearing my my energy because if i have toxic energy that's weighing me down especially living at my mom's and being triggered um it's going to be hard to be open to receive those kinds of messages so i i've been saging a lot i've been that's that's another ritual that helps sage um being outside deep breathing legs up the wall um when your legs are above your heart it really helps with anxiety with with taking deeper breaths um taking deep breaths in and holding for 10 or 15 seconds and then open mouth exhaling I do have um, a variety of breath work tutorials on my Instagram. Um, they're in my reels. So they're short little breath work snippets that will help you um, with your breath work. Um, and that helps with anxiety and, and stress and rumination. And another thing that helps me is journaling. I journal every single day. I just lay down on the floor. I stretch. Sometimes I'll I'll lay with my legs spread and in, in a straddle position, and then I'll put a pillow underneath my torso, and I just have my journal there, and I am journaling, and I'm stretching, and it feels good. Um, and journaling doesn't have to look pretty. It can be it could be scratching the paper with your pen. It could be, you know, writing all the things you're angry about. It can be writing all the things that you need to focus on or a gratitude list. Um, I do have my modern meditations journaling and meditation course that's on my Etsy and that's always linked in the show notes. Um, it just it has tons of binaural beats and guided meditations that I recorded and shadow work journaling prompts to help you heal. Um, and the the guided meditations they have breath work and visualization visualization and um, guided you know meditation so if you're the kind of person that needs some structure needs some guidance through your meditation practice um, that's definitely a option um, another thing that I've been noticing that helps especially the week that we were up in New, New Jersey with my uncle is the the powers of mundane like doing the dishes and doing little house chores can be the glue of your of your mind I mean it I feel like it was keeping my uncle sane because I mean he's he lost his soulmate you know um it's just so fucked up and the only thing that's been helping him is texting um I've been texting him every day and we just talk about the mundane parts of life the weather what'd you have for lunch what are you gonna have for dinner oh what'd you do today what errands did you run um <laughs> it's kind of funny because everybody says oh I don't want to talk about the weather I don't want to talk about um dumb shit well guess what when somebody's going through grief that's the only thing that sometimes you can talk about or you can talk about what shows you're watching or what movies you're watching or you know what you have to do in the house or you know just checking in with my uncle every single day and I'm going to continue doing that every single day of my life <laughs> I, I don't see a day where I'm not going to do that um, just checking in what are you doing if you have anybody in your life who has lost someone recently all you can really do is say hey how can I support you like what what do you need you know what do you let me know what what I can do for you and um what do you want to talk about or you know like not everybody wants to talk about the death of their loved one all the time um not everybody wants to hear what you gotta say about it. Um, sometimes they just want some normalcy and normalcy comes from the mundane parts of life, you know? Doing laundry, cooking, cleaning, mowing the lawn, taking the dog out for a walk, 
talking about the weather, talking about what you had to eat that day. It's things like this that bring us um, a sense of normalcy to our lives when things are so out of control and so scary and so chaotic. So that's what's um, been helping me get through the grief and be there for my uncle through the grief because he is the one who's suffering the most. Um, I know that the entire family is crushed that we lost um, such an amazing person, but he's the one who's suffering the most and we've all just had to be there for him, calling him, texting him, and just shooting the shit, talking about the magical mundane stuff, you know? And I call it magical mundane because the mundane truly is a form of magic if you let it, if you let it um, be, you know? Um, the most mundane thing that I've been doing is just going for a walk around the block and saying hello to people, you know? Um, making my my smoothies or my elixirs or my, my teas and stuff like that. Like, that's not that magical of, of a thing, but to me, it's it's a ritual, it's healing my body, you know, listening to podcasts that are going to nourish my brain and help me learn about my body and help me learn about my mind. Knowledge is power, so when, when you know more about your body and your mind, you, you feel like you have more control over things, you know, even if you don't, even if your life is totally out of control, at least you, you can control what you put in your body. To all my sober curious people, are you tired of being hungover? Are you tired of waking up feeling like shit after a night of drinking? Sometimes drinking doesn't lead to fun and it can lead to just waking up feeling horrible the next morning. I can't tell you how many mornings I woke up, especially in art school, feeling absolutely terrible. And, you know, as I've been in my sober curious journey the last few years, um, my life has been changed dramatically. And that's why I'm super excited to be partnering up with Curious Elixirs. Curious Elixirs are booze-free craft cocktails infused with adaptogens to help you unwind. Whether you're sober or just sober curious, toasting your team, or sipping solo, Curious Elixirs is on the mission to create the world's most sophisticated cocktails without the alcohol. So these are amazing. They, they're in glass bottles. They have, they're infused with these herbs and botanicals and adaptogens. And, so, and, they're, and they're fizzy and they're bubbly. So right now I'm sipping on the number four. What's in this one? This, is, this has holy basil to help you unwind, American ginseng to give you a boost, um, it also has orange. It's so good. Yum. It's really nice just to have a drink that isn't going to make me feel like shit the next morning. I mean, who wants to feel hungover? It's really not fun. You can't be productive. Um, and nothing good has come from you know, nights out drinking copious amounts of alcohol. So I've been really enjoying these curious elixirs. Um, you can pour it in a nice glass. It also comes in this, you know, glass bottle that looks like a beer. So if you're going to a house party or you're going to some kind of event, you can just bring these glass bottles and it kind of looks like a craft beer. I mean, it's in the same kind of bottle. Um, and if somebody asks you why you're not drinking, all you have to say is that, you know, you feel your best when you're sober. You don't really have to, like, go into this big thing of, you know, why you're stopping drinking or, you know, all the regrets that you have from drinking. I think just wanting to feel your best is a good enough excuse to want to stop drinking. So if you want to drink a nice booze-free drink without the hangover, without the body feeling like death the next day, 
I highly recommend Curious Elixirs. So you can head over to their Instagram, which is Curious Elixirs, and you can check out their website, which is CuriousElixirs.com. And when you use the discount code VIBE22, you're going to get $10 off any order of $50 or more. So if you're trying to be sober curious this spring and summer, set yourself up for success. Don't go to a party empty handed because who knows what they're going to have there. They might not have kombucha. They might not have juice. They might just have shitty beer and Chardonnay and Tito's. So, go get some Curious Elixirs, you're going to get $10 off your $50 purchase, and you're going to use code VIBE22 over at CuriousElixirs.com, that's Curious Elixirs with an S at the end, dot com, and you can go over to their Instagram page and check out all of their amazing elixirs at Curious Elixirs on Instagram. Again, CuriousElixirs.com and use the discount code VIBE22. What you eat, what you drink, um, the supplements and the herbs that you take, these are all things that can bring us a sense of um, safety because if we know that we're doing everything that we can to heal and to feel better, then at least we're doing everything that we can, you know? At least we know that we are doing everything in our nature to heal, to nourish, to heal the gut, to heal the body, to heal any autoimmune stuff we have going on. You know, if we're proactive and we're going to therapy and we're going to support groups and we're, we're eating the proper foods that work with our body and we're staying away from drugs or alcohol, if that's what you need to do, um, we're doing everything that we can. So focusing on, like I said, when you're in an environment that feels out of your control or you're in um, a life situation that you wish you weren't in, focusing on what you can, you know, what you can control and what you can, um, like, again, being here at my mom's is, it's an opening for me too, because I have lots of time on my hands. I have, I have, you know, I don't have a job here other than the podcast, other than marketing. So I'm not going anywhere to work. Um, It gives me extra time to focus on my health. It gives me extra time to call family members. It's giving me extra time to um, heal the relationship with my mom and spend time with my mom because let's face it, our parents aren't going to be here forever either. And if I lost my mom tomorrow, I'd have a lot of regrets. And I I don't like to think about that, but losing my aunt has made me realize, you know, how do you want the relationships in your life to feel? Um, Patch up any, anything that needs healing, anything that, um, you know, needs to be said, Um, if you've got any loose ends or anything that is up in the air, any, any conflict that you need to resolve, any conversations that you just feel like you need to have with people, just have them, you know, have the hard conversations, do the hard thing, because if that person's gone tomorrow, you, you don't want to have any regrets. You want to you want to know that you told them you loved them and that, you know, you you got all those kinks sorted out and um that's I guess part of the reason why I'm here as well. Um I think again to to bring it full circle. I think the universe or spirit or god or whatever you want to call it um was preparing me for this um and setting me up so that I could do some more healing with my mom and it's a big eye-opener because one of my best friends in Miami he lost his mom to cancer and the same week that I was up north for um, my my aunt's funeral he was in Mexico spreading his mother's ashes and he said to me just you know I know it sucks but just be grateful that you can spend some time with your mom, you know? 
and that really just it really hit me and it was like you know what yeah me and my mom used to fight a lot now um we don't fight yes we disagree yes I t- I I get angry yes I get upset with her but our communication has gotten a lot better and I feel like this whole experience of death of reunion of healing family wounds um I am here at my mom's for a reason for a divine reason you know and it's to to deepen the relationship I have with her to heal the mother wound really once and for all um because I'm here, so I might as well, you know, um, and I also feel like I need to be here for my mom because her mom is sick, you know, and we both have a really amazing relationship with my grandmother, my mom's mom, but I can see it in her eyes. She knows that, um, she might not be here for much longer. And God forbid, if something happened to my grandmother, um, I would want to be there for my mom right away. I, you know, because I don't think her husband's going to really be there for her. Um, as sad as that is, he's, he's not a, um, he's not a spiritual person. He's not a, an emotional person. He's, he's a toxic masculine baby boomer, you know? So I feel like I really am here for a reason. I'm here to help my mom, support my mom, help her around the house, help her clean, help her organize, spring cleaning, um, deepening our, our relationship because I can tell that my mom is lonely when me and my sister aren't in the picture, you know? Um, so I'm taking everything as a lesson, as, an, as an, a, a door opening, as an opportunity. You know, I'm I'm here for whatever reason. I, I could either be angry and bitter about it or I could extract meaning from this. And I know that I'm not going to be living at my mom's forever, but right now it feels it feels right. It feels um like this is where I need to be to save money, to eventually find an apartment, to spend time with my family as my mom and I are grieving the the death of my aunt, you know being there for family is the most important thing to me right now and healing the relationships with my family members and communicating with them and talking to them every day that's what's important to me right now because someone you love can be gone tomorrow and as fucked up as that sounds like my dad said you know that's life people die and it sounds very, very grim, but he's had a lot of friends and family family members die as well. He's had a lot of death happen around him, and I think that's why he is so healthy and proactive and eats healthy. And he's he's uh, he you know he's super active. He's like 58 years old, the same age as my aunt who just passed away, which is terrifying. But my dad's healthy, you know. He's he's the healthiest guy. I know and you know he's got nothing going on he's 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 the healthiest old dude I know um and he's got a landscaping business he's always outside cutting lawns doing landscaping I mean this guy he's a workaholic he's he's my Gemini dad (laughs) um and he's where I get a lot of my who I am is from him and death you know spending time with my dad I saw him a a few times we hung out went to the bar got a drink you know got some dinner and I soaked in every moment that I had with him because I don't see him very often especially during COVID I mean I haven't seen him since October 2020 and you know it's, it's a pretty long time and I think losing my aunt you know he was he he was close with her when my parents were married um he said, you know what, yeah, like, once I get some time off, we'll, I'll come visit you, and I think it made him realize how important it is to spend time with family, even though, yes, he is a workaholic, he's very, very driven and focused on 
saving money for his retirement and he's got two jobs and it's like I try to tell him you know dad like you got you can't like overwork yourself but he's a typical Gemini you know his his birthday is 6363 so I don't know what those numbers mean 6363 um interesting enough I think that's the age that his dad died when my grandfather died I think he was 63 years old so that's really fucking crazy um I just I just hope this episode has helped somebody anybody out there who's dealing with death with family with triggers with life transitions that feel like they're out of your control um being an empath in these kind of situations can be very very heavy and um you just have to make sure you're attending to yourself make sure you are taking breaks getting away you know like you can't be in you can't be living in the energy of the triggers and toxicity or things you know the the energy that's affecting you in a negative way you can't just sit in it all day all night you have to break up the energy through movement, through moments of silence, through meditation, through, you know, putting on a song and just going for a walk or a jog or whatever. So I'm sure that when I end this episode, there'll be a million things that I feel like I didn't touch on. But for now, I guess that's fine. I just really wanted to, to you know, share these lessons and these hard things that we're going through doing the hard thing like for me spending a time spending a week with my family that was the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life and I got through it and now I feel like wow I can pretty much do anything (laughs) you know so I'm just gonna leave it at that I hope this episode helped you and um, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or email me or whatever Um, and I hope that you have a good rest of your day or your evening. All right. Bye. She got attacked by a pack of dogs. But she said it's okay. I got some wilderness skills beneath my belt. She said she used to be a part of a scout team. They nearly meet a leader one time. They didn't have enough thread to sew the patches on. She said, you know how you heard about that family that burned down in that house? Well, that was her. She said it was just some hoax that you laid up. Watch people cry. Yes, you whispered to me softly.